Find the slope of the curve y is equal to the sine of 4x all raised to the eighth power at x is equal to pi over 6. And since we need to find the slope of the curve, we need to figure out the derivative of y with respect to x. And we're dealing with composite functions, so we need to use the chain rule for derivatives. So if we break up this function y into its composite functions, we have, let's say, a of x is equal to 4x. That would be the innermost function. b of x is equal to sine of x is the middle function. And c of x is equal to x to the eighth power is the outermost function. So y is equal to c of b of a of x. And to take the derivative of this with respect to x, you first take the derivative of the outside function, keeping the inner functions the same, and then you multiply by the derivative of the next innermost function. So b of x would be next, so b prime of a of x would keep the innermost function the same, and then multiply that by the derivative of the inside function, a prime of x. So let's apply this idea to our function y here. So dy dx We'll take the derivative of this outermost function, so we'll bring the 8 down in front and subtract the exponent by 1, and we'll leave the inner functions alone, and then multiply by the derivative of this middle function, the sine of 4x, so that would be just the cosine of 4x, and then we have to multiply this by the derivative of the innermost function, this 4x, and since this is x to the first, you bring the 1 down and subtract 1 from the exponent so that we're left with x to the 0, which is 1. So we'll just multiply by 4. And we can simplify a little bit. The 8 and the 4 multiply together, make 32. And we have the sine of 4x raised to the 7th power multiplied by the cosine of 4x. And we need to evaluate this derivative, so y prime, at an x value of pi over 6. So plugging that in, we have 32 times the sine of 4 pi over 6, so 2 pi over 3, that's all raised to the 7th power, times the cosine of 4 times pi over 6, which again is 2 pi over 3, and the sine of 2 pi over 3 is equal to the square root of 3 over 2. And the cosine of 2 pi over 3 is equal to minus 1 half. So we just have to plug in these values into the function. So we have that y prime evaluated at x is equal to pi over 6 is equal to 32 times this root 3 over 2 raised to the 7th power. And then we have to multiply by minus 1 half. So let's simplify a little. The 32 divided by 2 here becomes just 16. We'll put the minus out in front. And we have to raise this expression to the 7th power. So 2 to the 7th will be in our denominator. And it's multiplied by root 3 to the 7th power. And root 3 to the 7th power, you can imagine this as root 3 multiplied by itself 7 times. And we can pair up 6 of those, since a pair of them, root 3 times root 3, would just be 3. So you'd have 3 times 3 times 3 from 6 of these 7 root 3s, and that's just 27. And then you're just left with 1 root 3 after that. So simplifying again, we'd have minus 16 times 27 divided by 2 to the 7th power, which is 128, multiplied by the square root of 3. And 16 divided by 128 simplifies to 1 divided by 8. So we have minus 27 times the square root of 3 over 8. 
and this is our final answer.